Hi, this is Hussein, and welcome back to the session number six of modernizing application with Azure and Kubernetes. In this session, we'll see how we we're gonna migrate our data into Azure Cosmos database. We'll see also what are our options to store any configuration data in Kubernetes. Then we'll review the application architecture and talk about the changes that we will make. And in our demo, I will show you how you can simply provision Azure Cosmos database, create Kubernetes secrets, and do some modification on the manifest files to allow the application to communicate with Cosmos. Here are the prerequisites and the tools you need to install. And this is the repo where you can find the code for this uh, uh, session. In order to reduce overhead and add more flexibility, we need to avoid hard code any configuration data inside our manifest files or container images. Kubernetes provides two types of objects that can inject configuration data into a container when it starts up. Config map and secrets. Config map and secrets are some sort of a dictionary that stores data in key value pairs. They behave similarly in Kubernetes, both in how they are created and how they can be exposed inside a container. But which one should we use? Actually, it depends on what type of information we want to store. Use config maps whenever you need to refer to strings that don't contain sensitive information, simply because it will store them as plain text. On the other hand, use secrets to store data that contain sensitive information such as API keys, secrets, and tokens. Secrets are more safe and secure because data stored inside it is obfuscated with the base64 encoding. Keep in mind, secrets are not fully secure, but at least the data kept inside are not readable. So consider using Azure Vaults as an alternative solution. For this exercise, I will use secrets because I want to stick with Kubernetes native objects. This is the current state of the application on Azure, where we left off in the last session. We have deployed our backend and frontend application, and we created the, uh, also the Azure Kubernetes cluster. If you haven't watched that session, please do to understand what's happening here. If you recall, we, can, we still cannot get any data to show up in our UI. That's because the data part of the application is still missing. Running on Mongo database on Kubernetes is not easy. We need to use stateful sets, create storage classes to persist data, and other configuration stuff. And that's not, the old, not, that's not all the story. In a critical mission application, we take care and manage data replication and synchronization, scalability, and high availability. The good news is we can avoid all this hassle and offload all these responsibilities to Azure by leveraging Azure Cosmos database. Now, the backend application need to communicate with Cosmos. So we have to store the connection string details somewhere. Connection string, as we know, contains sensitive information such as username and passwords. And we have already learned in the previous slide that our best option if we want to stick with Kubernetes native objects is to use Kubernetes secrets. So we will, we will create Kubernetes secrets and store all the connection string and confidential information inside it. Now let's get into the practical part and see how we can get this done. So we will continue where we left off in the previous session. I'm here connected uh, my, to my Azure uh, Kubernetes uh, service cluster, and I have already listed my services on my pods. So I have two services, the backend API, the front end UI, and the actual pods or containers are running fine. And here you have the external IP addresses where you can browse your services. So if I'm going to browse my front application, I'm going to uh, browse it through this API. So this AP. And uh, if you see here, I've already done this. So I'm going to click on Get Products and we can't see any data because the Mongo database part is still missing. 
So the first part of, the, of this exercise is to create the Cosmo database. So I'm, click, I'm already in the Azure portal here. So I'm gonna create the resource, select the databases, and specify which type of database I need to create. Uh, in my case, it's Azure Cosmo database. Here you need to specify the resource group. This is my resource group, and and give it in a, a, a unique account name. Uh, so let's call it the product uh, store. Uh, whatever uh, cosmos and then you specify the API as we said uh, cosmos provide uh, us with different set of APIs uh, to support our workloads in my case I need to select Mongo database I will keep the rest uh, uh, settings as default but I will change the location to uh, east US and uh, for myself here I'm gonna stick with non production because I do I want to avoid incurring extra cost so it's so easy you go review and you create and once the validation uh, succeeded you just create it uh, and that's it so the creation process will take a while so I've already uh, provisioned uh, Cosmos database I'm gonna go navigate to uh, resource group again and this is my uh, resource group so if you see here I've already done that before so this is my products uh, store Cosmos this is uh, what we will use here so uh, once you create the account you need to create actual database inside the account because the account itself can hold different databases so you click on add collection and then you present it with this uh, GUI you create a new uh, database in your case product store 2 and then uh, I will uncheck the provision database robot because this is just for testing you specify the collection which will hold your actual documents or the container which holds your actual documents in my case I'm calling it products and, and changes we don't need unlimited so I'm gonna select fixed uh, size and then you keep this as a minimum uh, which is a robot you click OK and that's it you will have another collection uh, under your collections here so as I said before, I've already created that. I've called it product store. Inside product store, uh, you will have your products, which is a collection, and this is where you will have your documents. And in order to migrate your documents from your local environment or whatever database, actually Microsoft provides us with a nice data migration tool. And this is an article, a great article. Um, you it depends on what you have: SQL table or Gremlin AP, Gremlin data. So uh, you're not gonna install this tool, and then uh, you specify what is your actual data source. Uh, as you see, it supports different data sources: JSON files, CSV files, SQL. Mongo whatever uh, I'm not going uh, to go through this because I just need to demonstrate the actual um, uh, connectivity with Cosmos and how it works with Kubernetes so what I've did is I went back to my uh, visual my code and in the database folder here I have a couple of products so I just copy one of those products and then paste it, paste it inside um, here so uh, what you're gonna do is create a new document and you paste it here and then click save and that's it this is the actual like uh, the collection that or database that we have created I don't need anymore so I'm gonna delete it So I'm gonna work with product store Cosmos database. So now the next step is to go back to uh, Visual Studio Code and to create uh, the actual secret that you will hold uh, your key value per your configuration date, right? Your connection string. I've already created a manifest file. Uh, I've called it DB secret. And if you see here, I'm specifying uh, what kind of YAML file this is. This is secret. Uh, and then under the metadata, you specify the name of the secret. I'm calling it Cosmos database, and here uh, the data attribute, uh, which actually holds uh, different several items indexed by key. Uh, each key is what contains your you contains your secret key value. So in my situation here, DB represents my connection string, and the value, as you see, 
it's already hashed right it's not plain text as we explained before so in order to to, to, to uh, produce that uh, encode string I'm go I need to go back to my uh, Azure portal and uh, select and go back to my Azure Cosmos uh, database and here you will have a connection string you're gonna need to grab one of those connection string primary connection string or secondary connection string grab it and then go back to your terminal um, and then execute the following command to uh, base 4 encode the secret value which is the connection string itself so um, echo and specify what is your actual connection string here sorry so I copied the wrong um, I'm copied the I didn't copy the connection string and you specify base 64 as encoding so what you're gonna do is you place your uh, put your connection string inside uh, these codes and um, once you execute that command have um, the actual encoded value for sure I'm just uh, you need to put here replace this with your actual connection string uh, from here so once you produce the encoded value you replace it you put it as a value and then in this situation we have our actual secret with the DB that represent with the database key which represents the connection string itself so now I'm ready I need to uh, deploy that to create that secret inside my cluster so what I will do is navigate to my um, create folder where the uh, I can see the files and then kubectl apply my db secret the secret is created what I will do next is I will list all the secret so that's good I have already created my uh, Cosmo database secret and let's see uh, the details or describe what is that secret so in order to see more details you can use this command describe okay I have a so we have two secrets the Cosmo database and and the other one which is the default token which is already provided and you can see here this is the, the data and we have database uh, uh, as a key which we're gonna use inside the actual container now so that's great I've dedicated my secret I'm going back to my actual backend my product API and what I need to do here is to change the container to to read the environment variables that I want right so under the container here I need to specify the environment variables I'm gonna grab this from here and put it under the pod under the container itself so what does this mean what does this uh, yeah, what does this represent? So environment represents uh, the actual uh, list of uh, environment variables that you need to set in the container itself. So I have uh, set two environment variables. This is the name of the first one, which represents my database. I'm, uh, sp I, I specify database as product store. And then here in the second one, I'm specifying the connection string and the value from tells me what is the actual source for my environment variable right in my case it's a secret so I'm, I'm using the secret key ref attribute and then specifying the secret name which is my Cosmo database and the key which is the actual key inside the secret itself which is the database the DB I can do the same for the Portex uh, database setting database name uh, but I've uh, do did it in this way to show you like what are different way of passing environment variable to the container right um, so now let's deploy again uh, that backend uh, yaml file and then so the deployment has changed let me see if my ports are fine
So yeah, this is running. So the actual what, what's happening now is terminating the previous one and creating a new one because I've changed the manifest files. That's fine. I'm gonna go back to my uh, uh, actual UI application, get products, and uh, I expect to see my products.